Welcome back to the Talos of Movie Reviews, starring me, the co-host, Michael, or Model Y Mike, with the one, the only, the unique, the G4M1 Mac Cube guy, Nick Answeeney. How's it going? Who's specifically not a co-host, because we've been over this. I'm not smart enough to be a co-host. Hi! Hi! Oh my goodness, this is going to be a good episode. I cannot wait to talk about the end of the world. You know, people rising from Egyptian tombs and just trying to take over the entire universe. It's going to be a good episode. X-Men Apocalypse Part 2. Can't wait to review it. <laughs> no! No, we're reviewing nah. a fun, lighthearted movie today. What movie are we reviewing today, Mr. Mike? Indian in the Cupboard, right? <laughs> <laughs> No. That was a movie that just popped in my brain that I haven't thought of in years. No, we are reviewing the wonderful Emperor's New Groove, probably one of my favorite show or shows, movies that I've ever watched. So I'm going to be a little bit probably biased in this. I'm, I'm sure you will as well, Nick. Bias? This whole show is our bias, dude. Like, stop hiding it. Embrace it. It is amazing. Um, yeah, Emperor's New Groove. Uh, probably my favorite non-pixar comedy animated kids movie ever it it is it is really the, there's only one thing that's good about it but it's probably better in this one aspect than any other movie um it is the writing the writing is perfect and the animation is great you know it's uh 2000 i believe the year 2000 uh disney uh kind of hand 2d animation um beautiful beautiful and all but like it's the writing that really makes the film for me. So, I didn't... You want to know how many people animated this movie? Like, at least, like, 50? Over 350 animators credited on IMDb. For just doing the animating. This is not including visual effects and art department. Those are also pretty big. Wow. This one was the biggest at 350 animators. And this is, I believe... Still the 2D phase of animation. Yeah. Um, they had a few 3D shots, crazy. though, where, like, the opening Crusco song, like, he's walking, and then it, like, pans up and pans down. Like, that's that's all three-dimensional, for sure. In a way, I think it's drawn in a way to look like it's three-dimensional, but I don't think yeah. they're actually using three-dimensional tools. They're just yeah, getting it's... different viewpoints to make it look like it's a very fluid space. It's... Maybe the same with like Pocahontas mm -hmm. or yeah, it's that kind uh, of Tarzan merging like of that, computer where... and pencil. Exactly, exactly. But it's amazing that over 350 animators worked on this Jeez. for this. I think 78 minute film, like not even two hours, not even close. We're probably going to talk about this film for 78 minutes, so buckle your seatbelts. <laughs> <laughs> Back on that train again with uh, reviewing a movie. We're not going to walk through it like we did in the no, past. No, no, no. I no. think this movie deserves more, definitely more thought and a lot mm -hmm. more appreciation in terms of how much work was put into it. Yeah. I was surprised. Um, I guess this is kind of something that we did a while back is kind of some of the budget numbers on how much money mm -hmm. was dumped into the project and how much yeah. they got out of it. They dumped in $100 million, and that's because they had a lot of issues with getting it on time the scheduling was all mm. in place they were supposed to release this during the summer of 2000 um and that's what their customer wanted and a bunch of other people wanted yeah. to get done by um ended up the original lead dropped out of the project um, a lot of animators got pushed over to the 2000 fantasia movie that they were Ooh, doing um, yeah, yeah, yeah. to mm -hmm. commemorate i don't know how many years almost 50 years i think of disney or since the original Fantasia that they animated. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of animators went there. But they ended up getting it done, and it garnered so much uh, popularity, or at least so much money, that the box office reported a $169.6 million. So nice. almost the funny number. <laughs> yeah, almost the funny number. So close. <laughs> Some people should have should have gone to the movie theater a few more times. And that's just movie theater. I, I, I don't... I didn't see this in the movie theater, and I know tons of people didn't. This was really, I think, made to be a direct-to-video type movie. I don't think this was ever really supposed to be, you know, the huge Hollywood blockbuster. If anything, it's a fun summer cl flick that, you know, had really, really came into its own with the VHS and, you know, just being able to watch this on Saturday morning while you're waiting for your parents to wake up. Like, it's just, it's just a funny, you know, a funny movie, right? And, it, and it's super approachable to all ages. 
Like, as a kid, I remember watching this movie and being like, oh, he's a llama, that's funny. Oh, evil cat has funny voice. Um, but then, like, as an adult, I'm watching it and just Kronk saying, of course, you can't, he can't come back, especially after that beautiful eulogy you gave. <laughs> it's just like all, all these things that went, like, miles over my head. I get him as an adult now, and it's so much fun. Uh, definitely accessible movie to all ages is uh, lots of fun. So I don't know how I got on that kick, but yeah. Yeah, a lot of interesting innuendos in this as well. I mean, I didn't catch on all of them. Uh, apparently, at one point, the word damn is spelt out in wooden planks, which is a funny play on huh. wooden planks and other things because yeah. dams were originally built with wood by beavers and stuff, and then humans adapted it to concrete and other stuff. But um, just a lot of funny things like that. Um, <laughs> I think He's what smoke. really made me laugh is you don't really realize as a kid, but he calls or in the song at the beginning, Kuzgo basically calls himself the Alpha and Omega, mm-hmm. or at least the singer calls him Alpha and Omega. I'm yeah. just like, this is hilarious. This guy's so in over his head. Yeah. That he just sees himself as a deity. Yep. And what does a deity do? Make a pool on a, uh, a giant mountain or hill out in the middle of nowhere. Like, Kuzgotopia. Why not? Come on. Why not? Kuzgotopia. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! Beautiful movie. So, what, what's your first memory of this movie, Mike? Like, what, what's your? I'm, I know we're both well, coming into this with a ton of nostalgia. I think we're skipping something right now. Oh, okay. What would you rate this movie, <gasps> Mister? Oh, and Sweetie, yeah. Out okay, uh, out of eight, this movie easily gets a six and a half, potentially seven. Yeah, it, if we're going it, on halves, this is probably a seven point five for me. Okay, it's not nice, the nice. most perfect movie, but. I caught myself many times just laughing out loud, yeah. and then my wife just looking at me. Of course, she's <laughs> laughing too, but just looking at me like, "Why are you laughing so much?" <laughs> and I'm just like, "This is a great, enjoyable movie." I'm yeah, so many years old. I'm in my late twenties, and I'm able to just enjoy this movie, like mm-hmm. not having to pretend to enjoy it, like with many other movies that we've kind of watched. Um, yeah. Maybe not necessarily like I'm putting on a fake facade just to enjoy the movie, but like. This one, honestly, every single scene, whether it's just yeah. pure Kronk being Kronk or just <laughs> the writing, the writers, like you said, hilarious and genius in what mm-hmm. zingers and other jokes that they throw into this that, it, like you said, very approachable, but easily a movie that anyone could sit down and watch and enjoy, even if they're two years old to 92 or something like that, I guess. That, yeah. I think I just stole that from a Christmas song, but um, <laughs> it's okay. We're just borrowing. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. So, when's the first time you remember watching this movie, Nick? Um, I, I was I was so young. I I don't remember when it was, but I remember uh, we had it on VHS, and I remember uh, some you know Saturday or Sunday mornings or whenever like you know the parentals weren't stirring yet, and you know they were you know trying to run away from us hooligan kids uh we would we would pop in you know different kind of you know early 2000s late 90s cartoons you know ariel or beauty and the beast but my favorite was always emperor's new groove because it was funny (laughs) and me as like a little four five six year old enjoyed that kind of humor of you know pretty slapstick you know the uh alligator acting like a dog and all the bad guys turning into like cows and squids and all that funny it's just like it just felt like a very funny movie visually as a kid um and i don't think i understood any of the actual jokes that were going on watching this again but uh but yeah i I don't have a distinct like and then the vhs box was opened and inside we saw the emperor's new group no there's none of that but uh but it was definitely mentioned vhx box and i remember the vhx box now very big and bulky has the big flanges on it all plasticky and then you open it up and it's got the film in there and yeah you gotta rewind it thought about a vhx yes yes (laughs) (laughs) insert it into the vhs hit the big rewind button and then either walk away or you kind of just spoil yourself with the whole movie again even though Mm -hmm. you're about to sit down and watch it but it's in reverse i guess yeah, um, or you push the stop button and then push the reverse button. It goes even faster and goes. I never did that. Really? Uh oh. Or maybe I did it on accident. Okay. Well, that's how we always wow. did it. Anyway, yeah. So just just tons of like childhood nostalgia, just like real real good memories on Saturday morning. You know, before 
you know, anyone is up or whatever making too much noise. It's just like, you know, sit, you know, little, little kids get up way too early sometimes just because, you know, the sun's up. So I'm just sitting there like in a little blanket on the floor in the living room watching the Emperor's New Group. Probably just our minds like being ushered out of bed and then to kindergarten or something like that. Like you yeah. get up early, right? The parents have yeah. to go to work or they have to drop you off at kindergarten. So you have to get up early. So maybe yeah. it's just your internal clock as a kid of just like, yeah. okay. It's time to get up, but then you realize it's a Saturday, and you're like, yes, <laughs> yes. Just watch movies and do whatever I want. <laughs> just be quiet until 10. That was the rule. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you're not wrong. I think yeah. for my mom, is more of just, she'll wake up around like 8 or 9 o'clock and then start yeah. making pancakes. Ooh, but nice. Definitely a lot of that nostalgia with this movie. It definitely takes me back, um, remembering all the things that were happening at that time, but just enjoying the movie nevertheless with all the hijinks that go on <laughs> literally <laughs> characters falling into a plot hole um, yes <laughs> at the very end of the movie and then all the fourth dimensional wall breaks yes just that like, was amazing either uh, the da- the narrator being Cusco or i guess him it stopping Spain, the movie right? and like scribbling over uh, pot, uh pacha <laughs> <laughs> this movie's about me not about him <laughs> okay thanks goodbye <laughs> <laughs> it's just like perfect timing, yeah. So the animators just definitely like at the good. very end. The animators definitely I was did say a good. At the very end. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no. We got a face. I'm delay. sorry, Nick. No. I was no. gonna mention the uh, was it the path at the end when they're chasing each or when yeah. the Balkanese are chasing yeah. Pacha and. Cusco. By all counts, it doesn't and make like, any they've sense. They've got the little purple triangles and the red squares, and they're looking at the red squares, and they're just like, what? <laughs> and they look at and see the purple triangles, they're like. Oh. <laughs> look at the camera <laughs> oh, there's yeah. a lot of like not not Walt Disney but uh, Warner Brothers type of like cartoon mm. entertainment mm-hmm. or at least tropes in this like with characters floating in midair and then looking at each other and then falling Yeah. or uh, other things like that or I guess in a sense like the funny gag with like the squirrel in the balloon right <laughs> the squirrel threatens yeah. to pop the balloon with all these uh Panthers. They're not leopards. Where Life, they? uh, panthers, yeah. Or, I don't know. Lions, tigers, bears, oh my. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. think they're panthers. <laughs> There's that joke, too. Threatens to pop the balloon, pops the balloon, while Cusco is surrounded by all these yeah. panthers. Nothing happens, and what wakes him up is not the balloon popping, but it's him <laughs> saying, ha! <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I, yeah. I think, overall, the writers did a good job, but the, the reason why this movie really works, for me at least, as an adult, is because it does not take itself seriously at all. I think that a lot of Disney films, especially in the late 90s, early 2000s, were trying to take themselves way too seriously. And I really appreciate that this this feels like it was written, you know, in the mid-2010s. Like, this is like a very modern style of writing where you're very self-aware, you're self-aware that this is a movie. The joke is that this is a movie. And, you know, the characters can interact with the narrator who can pause the movie. And it's just like, it feels very forward thinking for really late 90s writing. Obviously, it was released in 2000, but, you know, most of the stuff was done in the late 90s. Um, but this this does not take itself seriously at all, which is why it's so rewatchable for me as an adult. Um, so I'm, I'm famous for not watching a lot of movies, um, but when I was on a trip about uh, half a month ago, about three weeks ago, um, the only movie I downloaded and uh, wanted to watch in the car was, uh, I wasn't driving, by the way, I was a passenger, um, <laughs> the only, don't have a Model Y yet, um, the only movie I wanted to watch was Emperor's New Groove, and that's just, it was just like, I wanted a nice lighthearted, like, pass the next 78 minutes for me in lighthearted funniness, and that's what you get when you get, when you, when you pull up Emperor's New Groove, yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, we can't stress enough, the writing in this is fantastic, uh, Chris Williams and Mark Dindle. Um, who composed the story did a fantastic job kind of shaping how it was supposed to go and then all the other people um, I could name all of them but I'm not going to no. uh, <laughs> who contributed to the writing fantastic and not just the writing uh, Nick but also the cast that they garnered as well mm. they got okay. David Spade who is a pretty funny com- or comedic actor um, as Cusco they got John Goodman um, giving kind of like that Pacha type of uh, life Holiness. into the character yeah. um, Eartha Kitt 
Eartha Kitt, who, fantastic um, as Yzma, could not nail it more on the head, um, along with Patrick Warburton with Kronk. Uh, just fantastic casting, and you could definitely tell, like, if... I think they mentioned this in a behind the scenes. If you were to make a live action version of it and you still had all the actors alive, you could probably do it with all these people. I mean, maybe David Spade would be kind of hard. You'd have to put a lot of makeup on him and dye his <laughs> hair black and make it long, but uh, it could work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Um, the the life the life in this movie is very evident, and there's there there's something special with animation as a medium. Uh, whether it's 3D uh, computer generated or it's uh, you know 2D hand drawn or 2G 2D synthesized like this one kind of was, it's the artists are able to put a lot more thought and care into each frame, and I think that really comes through. Um, like especially with the old hand handmade animation ones, like we don't we don't get the uh, 20 minute Canto bite scene from Episode Eight of Star Wars. Like there's no waste. There's nothing wasted in this. Every single frame is well thought through, it flows, and it's and it's serving the purpose of the greater plot when the purpose of the plot is to obviously entertain you. And I I found that I was enjoying little bits of this movie that like I didn't really remember existed. Like the uh the uh lady at the uh cafe was like, Bless you for coming out in public. <laughs> I was just like <laughs> I get that now. Uh, it's just like nothing was wasted. Like they could have had that character say literally nothing or literally anything, and, but they they chose to have that go down exactly as it did to you know make a funny joke that adults get and just sails right over the kids' heads. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> All right. I don't. I don't think any conversation of uh, Emperor's New Groove would be complete without at least gushing over the character of Kronk for a minimum of 10 hours. Um, so let's begin that part of the show now. Kronk. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the best character in all of 2D animation. I said Kronk, it. Kronk, the character that's in Emperor's the New Groove, the one that serves Yzma. That character. Right. Yes. Right. Oh. Right. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I think... Every single line of the movie is well written, but they gave ninety percent of the funny lines to Kronk, and it was—it's glorious. It's glorious. Every single line of his is memeable. I—I I, I don't know how deep you want to get into this. But what's your favorite Kronk line? How about that? There's too many. I wrote a lot of notes down. I, I saw that. for this movie. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> well, um, there's a whole bunch. Um, a lot of the visual gags with him definitely got me this time around when watching it. Um, but, hmm. You're going to have to give me a minute while I look, okay. I, I think. But yeah. what would yours be beside? Would it still be right or would it be? Uh, uh, I mean, that scene? that whole scene is gold where, like, it's so obvious that they're about to poison him. Like, <laughs> well, okay, hit him on the head. And he's just like, more broccoli? <laughs> Like Kronk is amazing, but like even how like you hear, <laughs> and then he like hands the tray <laughs> with like the one obviously being for Cusco. It's just like that is a great scene and all, but uh, I think my favorite single line from Kronk uh, has to be the uh, he's sleeping in in the in the uh, outdoors and he's like <gasps> the uh, peasant from the restaurant. He didn't pay his bill. It's <laughs> just like, yes! Yes! That whole scene, they could have done without it, but instead, they go into the detail of, like, Yzma has this huge tent, of course, because she deserves yeah. it. Well, he's got, like, one that covers his calves. <laughs> yes. And then he's just sleeping on the ground with his little bear that he tucked away somewhere while he's hiking through this dense forest or whatever marsh. And then, of course, you have this revelation that he realizes, oh, wait, it's Pacha from, yeah. or I guess the peasant from the palace, but you saw him in the diner, and he has Cusco. Oh, that's right, but it took him, like, the whole movie to kind of piece it together. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you still looking? Oh, my goodness. Because I got I'm I got still looking. Else. I okay. mean, I'm so, looking at all of them, and they're all way too good. Yeah. Um, 
I think I don't know. I, I it okay. sums it up in this note that I wrote. Any scene with Kronk is gold. Um, yep. Yep. I don't know if they hit it on the head with like the sequel that they made with Kronk's new groove or whatever. On the head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in this, they any scene with Kronk is perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, the writers knew what they were doing with them. Uh, they knew exactly what his role was in the whole entire movie. It wasn't to, I mean, in some ways it's driving the plot forward, but at the same time, it's definitely giving a whole lot of comedic levity to a situation. I mm. mean, there's some pretty dark scenes that he's in, right? <laughs> like they're trying to poison the emperor to kill him so that he yeah. can rise to power. Instead, it's him focusing on his spinach puffs. And My spinach puffs! <laughs> remixing the war- the drinks because they're warm or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Oh, oh. My gosh. Um, I, I, I also got to say, uh, Yzma also has some really good uh, one-liners. My, my favorite is probably, Well, you should have thought of that before you became peasants. <laughs> How out of touch is this character? <laughs> what are you, are you talking about? Food. food. Oh. Get him away. <laughs> you should have thought of that before you became peasants. It's like, uh, oh the one gosh. that my mom quoted to me, for uh, she still quotes it to me, I think, to this day, is the scene where she's realizing or thinking about what she's going to do with Cusco. It's, I'm going to turn him into a little cricket and then put him in a box and put that box in another box and put that box in another box and mail that box to myself. And when it arrives, I smash it with the hammer. (laughs) But to save on postage, Um, just use this. Oh, but you can save on postage and just (laughs) kill him here. Oh, my gosh. It's not not poison. This is extract of llama. (laughs) I Which, like how the solution, like, they kind of pay a solution to that, right? Because they have labels on these vials, but of course yeah. they're peeling off. They're like, uh-huh. Well, what's the solution to this problem? You know, you put them all on a counter or like a, a shelf that has labels underneath them. <laughs> but then if they all fall, you have no sound. clue what it is. And even Kronk mentions it. In my defense, your labels are kind of confusing. You might think about relabeling. It's just like... <laughs> It's like every, I don't know if everything is paid off in this film, but a lot of things are from the beginning to the end or just mm-hmm. like in a very quick second. Like a prom yeah. is put in the hands of these characters and immediately like five seconds later it's solved yeah. in like the most ridiculous way. <laughs> um, they just appear at the end and by all counts it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I I think this this story was... It's not a different story, right? Like, we've seen the prince becoming a pauper and, you know, having to literally eat grass and become, you know, the the less stuck-up prince. You know, we've seen that story for every ages. You know, there's tons of those stories. But it wasn't, it wasn't, the story not necessarily wasn't, the story of the plot wasn't really the reason why you watch the movie. You watch it for that beautiful writing. And it's every single yeah, as you said, every single scene with Kronk is just gold. Um, ooh, a dancing warbler. That makes five for my wildlife bingo. <laughs> 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 every nature person ever. And every unnature person ever. <laughs> oh. Oh it's so goodness. true. It's so true. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you caught this. I, I never caught this until I watched it this time. So, uh... In the scene where they're poisoning Cusco, um, and Kronk mix ups, or mixes up the drinks, he ends mm-hmm. up uh, mixing them all together, and then yeah. very obviously just, don't drink poison! <laughs> and so then like, what she does is she just like pours it over her shoulder into like the cactus plant behind her, and then yeah. he's just like pouring it behind him, making it look yeah. like he's drinking it, but of course it's all splashing over his muscles. Um, <laughs> But what I found even more hilarious is, like, there's the whole transformation phase for Cusco, right? He goes from being yeah. human to being llama, and, like, you get, like, the long years or whatever. During that scene, if you look at the cactus at the very beginning, it's a two-pronged cactus. Okay. And then... Behind Yzma? Later in the scene, when he gets the long neck, it kind of cuts back to Yzma, and behind her, the cactus has now turned into a llama-like structure. Uh- <laughs> 
I never That's noticed so it until this watch through because I'm like, oh, it's funny. There's a llama cactus. Was that always there? And then I rewound the film to like right before. I'm like, it wasn't. It was two cactuses, and now it's one, but now it's a llama. That's, That's funny. amazing. That is so funny. I that I didn't catch that until you pointed out in your notes, and I pulled it up today, and I rewatched it, and I was like, wow. Good job, Mike. Good catch. Good catch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can also look it up on IMDb. I, I realized later in the evening or ever, I think it was up until like 1 o'clock or ever, um, reading the IMDb facts or ever. And of course, some of those are true. Some of those are false or ever. Yeah, yeah. But that was in there. So you could chalk it up to me reading it, but or you could just believe me. Well, thank you. Thank you for pointing it out. Thank you for pointing it out at the very minimum. Yeah. Tons of fun. Maybe we should talk about the main characters as well in this movie, not just... <laughs> Kronk is the main character. character. I'm sorry. I don't care about it. No, actually I do, because every single one of the four main characters here are really solid. I, I uh, yeah. Pacha, Pacha is probably my favorite, objectively, just because, like, he's so loving and, like, always willing to turn the other cheek. And, like, how many times has the Emperor tried to, like screw him over <laughs> like, we're gonna take your house we're gonna make you come all the way to the palace first then we're gonna take your house and then like i'm gonna lie to you and then like i'm gonna lie to you again and I'm then like throw your clothes on the fire then exactly. it's gonna be in the water it's gonna be all dirty <laughs> yeah pacha's just like so loving and accepting it's just like oh like you pacha there's that scene where was it um Cusco's drying off from washing himself or yeah and then just throws the towel or the Pacha's poncho onto him. And, yeah, on the on or the maybe, fire. No, he throws it and it lands onto the fire. Yeah, no, the like, poor guy's like trying to start a fire for like four times because. in a row. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the scene I'm thinking of. Because. Like, this dude has the ultimate patience in which I think they definitely give context for that patience with like showing his mm-hmm. family. with nah like, Nah, uh-huh. Nah, uh-huh. Nah, uh-huh. Nah, uh-huh. Nah, uh-huh. My sister and I would do that all the Chaka, time. Chica, Chaka, and Tipo. Tipo. Like, all, I mean, I, I would argue probably Chica's not that demanding, the wife, but Chaka and Tipo are very yeah. much those type of kids who are high high demand or at least like <laughs> high need. Uh, very much high the visual energy, gag yeah. for kids as well, but at the same time. Mm-hmm. You could definitely get a lot of context clues on who Pacha is <laughs> as a character from his family yeah. and himself, I guess. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and I think and there's then, a lot of like symbolism in who they surround the characters with, right? Like, we're able to become emotionally attached to Pacha, and like we're rooting for Pacha, and you know, the movie opens with a. Uh, Cruzco being like the you know center of the you know the main the main protagonist, but then it pretty quickly shifts to Pacha being the uh, main protagonist with uh, Cruzco being the the kind of antihero. Obviously, Isma's the obvious villain because she's scary by all beyond all me uh, all all reason. Scary beyond all reason. Measure? Scary beyond all reason. Yeah. Reason. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, How would you describe her? Scary beyond all reason. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's it. <laughs> no, I literally had nightmares about Yzma growing up. <laughs> she was like the the hundred and one Dalmatians lady. What's what's her Cruella Deville? Cruella like, Deville. Get her and like Yzma were like on the top of my like ah, nightmare territory. But uh, but yeah, it's like they they, they 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 pair Pacho with uh, his wife and the little kids. Uh, to to show that he's you know this very loving loving and uh, patient character and kind of contrast his patience with the impatience of his children, and then they contrast Isma with Kronk, the evil the epitome of evil Satan himself cast into this evil woman who's been around for over fifty years, um, <laughs> longer than that. Well, yeah, at least they fifty imply years. That she's like a hundred yeah. or something because she's, I think was well, every decade she gets a new servant or yeah, helpful person or so. she's yeah. had five so okay wow she's been alive longer than 50 years and if you have a servant you probably start out like maybe at 20 or something like that so she's at least yeah. 70 years old or something like that <laughs> yeah so you got her complete evilness contrasted with the innocence of Kronk, and it's just so funny to like watch the writers play off that because you got like got 
99 monkeys watching on the, sitting on the wall. One fell off and bumped his head. And then she's like, all right, when I give the signal, he's like, no, no, Kronk says to the kids, all right, when I give the signal, we're going to switch. And then uh, Yzma comes in and he's like, in. now. And then he switches and she's like, oh, I love you, Kronk. <laughs> it's like, destroy uh, destroy this door. He's like, you kidding? This is handmade mahogany. <laughs> like, I love you, Kronk. And it's just that nice dynamic that they were able to strike between like the epitome of all evil and her ha- her right hand man's like the nicest thing on earth. Like, knows how to squeakity squeak squeaker squeaking squeaking to the squirrels. And uh, yeah. So anyway, there's a lot of good contrasting. <laughs> Squeaker, Ugh. squeak, squeak, squeaking. <laughs> squeaking. <laughs> that was the perfect ending. Yeah. Um, oh. Let's see. So, yeah, good character development for sure. Um, I. What did you What did you think of uh, the? All right, what was your favorite scene? I guess like you should probably at least. It's hard to say. I would say <laughs> the movie is my favorite scene. <laughs> um, okay, Mike. Come on. <laughs> I I don't know if I <laughs> There's a funny line where it's when they're uh, introducing Isma and the narrating Cusco says Isma's proof that dinosaur yeah dinosaurs used to roam the earth. <laughs> uh, but I, that got me really good this time just like what? when 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 or, he like is zooming in and like looking at her eyeballs when like it cuts to the wrinkly version oh my gosh it's holding you up together <laughs> <laughs> like goes down to the log in her teeth <laughs> what how long has that, that been there <laughs> or like when he's firing her you hit your or you're a part of an outplacement you hit your stride 50 years ago <laughs> yeah, everyone hits their um, stride you just hit yours 50 years ago <laughs> Oh, I guess one of my favorite is actually a childhood moment. I had some neighbors who also watched this when, uh, when they were kids and I were kids as well. Um, but it's when uh, Kronk goes in to talk with the chef at Mudka's yes. cafe or whatever. Yes. And uh, he's basically trying to describe... Or no, no. I think Cusco comes in and then leaves, yeah. I think, and then Kronk comes in or something like that. And it just drives the cook over the wall. <laughs> he's like, you know what? I try and I try. And then he just gives up. And he's like, and he puts you, like, you have it. Yeah, and he like gets out his trunk and he like pours the thing of soup in it. And then stacks up all the stuff. And then in pure animation style, is able to close the trunk and just walks off. And it's just like, beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and then so Kronk's I, I just like, say... ooh, cooking. <laughs> Cusco was the reason why Kronk got his gig in Kronk's new groove. Um, Kronk's but, new groove? You mean Cru- uh, the Emperor's new groove? So there's Emperor's new groove, but then there's the sequel, Kronk's new groove. Have you not seen the sequel? There's a sequel? <laughs> it's not as good as the first oh. one, but it's a pretty good one. We might uh, have okay. to review it um, after x or something like that. We yeah. might have to push a few things. Huh. For those who are listening, we do have a list that we usually follow by for movies, and things get adjusted a lot. We might have to fit this in just because okay. Nick has not seen. Kronk's yeah, I didn't even know this existed. Also. So, so there's a. Okay, I did not know that. Hmm. It mainly follow. Is, it's all about Kronk. It's not really is it like his backstory or like what they do after or. Yes. Yes and yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So all about Kronk. I love it. I, I want to see this movie now because Kronk is my yeah. favorite part of this movie. Um, it's pretty good. It's it's very wholesome. I'd say it's very okay. much in line with this character is what this movie is i I guess oh goodness i guess we kind of skirted it or got a little bit too close or not too close but we we didn't really jump the shark but we've now kind of skipped to the end almost of the podcast sequence in regards to what would a sequel look like yeah maybe we'll just cut to that right now yeah let's um, do that and then we can go back to another part of the movie what would you want to see maybe like in a kuzco 2 or i guess kronk's new groove like, what would you um, want to see in this universe explored a little bit more after all the things that we saw in this movie? So, honestly, I am, I'm really curious about Kronk's backstory because I have it... I have a pretty good theory that I saw online and I've now adopted as my personal uh, idea. Kronk is probably a squirrel that Yzma turned into a human. 
And I want to see that theory play out on screen. Um, Maybe. The evidence is uh, he, Kronk is the only character that can talk to squirrels. Um, and he's the only character. So only the only characters who can talk to other animals or talk English or whatever language they talk in whatever time period they're set in um, are the characters who have been turned from uh, human into animal or animal into human. Um, so we only see this three times. We obviously see Cruzco's llama talk. We see uh, Squeaker squeak, Mick squeaking to the uh, to the squirrel from Kronk, and then we also see the little bug that gets eaten by the spider right when uh, right when Cruzco is realizing that the world's scary. He goes, "Help me! Help me!" <laughs> <laughs> that was violent. So that was the only time that we see animals uh, are using this language, and so. I kind of wonder if uh, if Kronk was once a squirrel, because he's also like very innocent and, and unknowing about anything, and so it kind of would make sense that oh, and 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 uh, and, and uh, Isma practically raised him, right? Isn't there that line? Uh, you practically, you wouldn't, you'd think he would turn out better. Practically raised him, right? I anyway, don't know. Maybe I don't know. That was just some anyway, you'll have between to, you'll, you'll Cusco have to. and Isma. I think I know the scene that you're talking about. It's one they're gonna yeah. poison Cusco. Yeah. So maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Could be. I, it was kind of an interesting. Maybe that's how I would she's like to see so that. She just sucks the life out of all of her uh, yeah. servants, and yeah. that's why she discards them after ten years, because then she sucked out all the life that she needs, and then she moves on to the next host or whatever because she's a parasite i guess so my, my oh. question though if if like we're talking taking this plot a little bit more seriously uh why the heck hasn't she taken over the world before because like it's obvious the, that she's been uh uh you know in power for a long long time and it's pretty obvious that the emperor really never does anything and so like it was super easy to poison him like to the point that Kronk could do it um <laughs> i don't know I don't Bot think holes. she ever thought of it. Um, if I remember correctly, it was Kronk who incepted the idea of just like, well, it's too yeah. bad he's not dead or ever, or something like yeah. that. Just like, Kronk? Kronk. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> like, she was waiting for him to say that, so it could actually be his yeah. fault. No. I don't know. As far as like a sequel, um, I would like to see if that theory is true or not. Um, we'll, we'll see. I guess probably sounds like there's backstory on Kronk here on this next one, which would be kind of fun. Um, I would also want to see in like kind of like a sequel, not so much pre-story but post-story, um, see more about uh, Cruzco and how he changes. Um, I think it would be kind of cool if he warms up to Pacha and his family, but uh, is still pretty a cr pretty much a cruel ruler to everybody else. I think that that would be uh, some room for even more character development because I know they kind of tied up with the nice bow at the end where you know he's living at the house next door and they go swimming together and everything. But like it might be kind of fun if we find out that uh, Cruzco was only being nice to Pacha and his family because they're now friends and he's still a terrible emperor and he has to go on another adventure to uh, to become a nice emperor. So Nick, I have some good news and or bad news. However you want to interpret it, they kind of did that already. Um, uh oh <clears throat> they came out with the disney channel original series oh goodness was it Cusco's new school or Cusco's whatever he basically goes to school um before he could become an emperor officially or even though he's already mm. an emperor he has to go to school and get a degree or something like that um it's basically disney's way of milking out a character they did the same yeah. with uh hercules right they mm. made the hercules movie and then they're like you know what people want more hercules let's just make it hercules in school and hmm. they did the same with cusco they did cusco in school <laughs> where he basically just kind of reverts back to being cusco again hmm. and just like nothing was really learned in the movie then hmm. because i believe canonically it takes place after the movie but i don't know interesting um so technically and that's separate kind of than the sequel or the prequel it's in the Cusco universe, however you want to call it. <laughs> so there's like more than just the Emperor's New Groove and more than this Kronk movie that I'm just hearing about. So there's the Emperor's New Groove, Kronk's New Groove, and then Emperor's New School or something like that. I forget what it's called. Huh. And it's like, I forget, I think it's two seasons with like, I think maybe 20 episodes in each. Whoa! Wow! Um, so there's a lot of content. And of course, they introduce other characters in there as well. Um... 
I <laughs> this is all stuff that I watched as a kid and I forgot about and I didn't remember it until I got done with the movie and of course what does Disney Plus do best and I think what any streaming service should do pretty well is when you're done with the movie they recommend you something related to it hmm. and what they recommended was this animated TV uh, series, which then got me into the Hercules series that I forgot about, which then got me into was an American Dragon Jake Long, if you ever watched that show on Disney no, Channel, and Kim Possible, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I realized, wow, this is a lot of my childhood wrapped up into <laughs> Disney Plus. How nice. I'm never going to have time to watch this, but how nice. <laughs> <laughs> how nice. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, okay, well, that's yeah. kind of cool. Uh, I'm glad to hear that there's, I guess, more Kronk and uh, more Yzma. Is Yzma in this, this one? Yzma's in both of them, yeah. Ooh, okay, cool, cool. All right, I'm looking forward to it. That'll, that'll be kind of be fun. I, yeah. I won't I won't be expecting as much because, obviously, sequels are never as good, but we'll, we'll see. I, I realized also they play a lot on a lot of tropes in society in this movie. Um, thinking about the scene that is probably one of my favorite of the chef saying, I try and I try. It's very much like a needy customer going to the back yeah. and being like, chef, you're not doing the right thing. You're not cooking yeah. correctly. I don't want tomatoes or whatever. Yeah. He's just like, whatever. I'm going to spit in your food at the end of this, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Or, huh. um, I don't know, awkward convos, right? Like you have uh, Cusco and Pacha talking at the pond. When uh, mm-hmm. Cusco is trying to convince Pacha to take Ribbit. him back to, Ribbit. yeah, Ribbit. <laughs> they're kind of just sitting there, just like, uh, I guess we go now. So your wife oh. knits, crochets. Oh, 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 nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, or uh, or even like when you're talking with someone, right, and they're trying to describe their family to you. It's like, oh, yeah, he's my cousin's brother's sister twice removed or ever. <laughs> yes. And it's the whole, like, with, in this yes. movie, it's my uncle's sister's mother's cousin brother twice removed. Twice removed. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like, uh, I lost track. Does that make him your brother? <laughs> or does that make him you? No, it makes sure you're great, 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 great. Great, great aunt. Later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the whole scene with, uh, with with them at Pacha's house is just so funny because the kids are little terrors. <laughs> They're definitely in control, right? Like, it's not Yzma and Kronk driving the uh, the conversation or the narrative. It's the kids just being like, oh, look, people, let's play jump rope with them. Like, who, ca- <laughs> who cares who you are? It doesn't matter if you're yeah. the leader of the great white north or some <laughs> conqueror of some country yeah you're gonna play jump rope with us <laughs> and then and then we're gonna you know have you fly down a hill and then get on a wheelbarrow duck you in a beehive and then feather you and then stick you on a, a pinata string and have a bunch of kids beat the tar out of you oh every time Such i see a that scene. random scene that's like, why it works who thought about that it's so like, funny <laughs> Who thinks of this hijinks of like, okay, how do we get Yzma into a situation where Kronk has to save her, yeah. but they're still behind Pacha and Kuzco, but we initiate this chase scene that we have a bit for that we've kind of planned. It's like, okay, well, yeah. she busts through the door, but then she gets knocked over by that part, the one yeah. half of the door, uh-huh. which then flings her into a cart, which then flings her through a, like, the imagination in these people's heads, again, credit to the writers and the animators and the visual effects people, like, I could not think of this. Like, I mean, of course, I couldn't think of it back in 1999 or 1998 when they were yeah. making it, but still, like, I don't think I can imagine that scene, like, yeah. off the top of my head of just, like, some Rube Goldberg just... machine of doom just to make someone into a pinata. <laughs> But it works so well because, like, the the movie does not take itself seriously at all, and it's like meant to just be a dumb, silly movie, and it just escalates so quickly. Like the reason why I like that, and I brought it up, is just it escalates so quickly, and it's so random. It's just like, and and then they have a little setup. It's like, all right, kids, one, two, three. <laughs> it's just like perfect. Yeah, 
What did you think about some of the camera work? I think that uh, obviously this is a 2D animation, but there's some like pretty complex camera movements. Uh, that I mean, are... like you said at the very beginning, right? We've got the palace of like setting up Cusco mm-hmm. to be this big grand person, and like he gets doorways built for him. But then like, of course, you get the scene where like the camera's kind of going over him, and yep. it definitely gives like the 3D effect, like we mentioned earlier. Um, I think they're really genius with a lot of the camera movements that they do, and the different perspectives that they take like the one that kind of shouts out to me is when they fall into like the ravine um on the rickety bridge Mm -hmm. and like the camera changes from the side view or whatever to the bottom or top down view and you get like the alligators on the bottom yeah and then you get back to the side view and then just all the different to me to me it's all like the zoom shots so like when when kronk is debating whether or not to save uh krusko as he's floating down the river you get like the he's about to go over the waterfall and then it goes and then it's just like a little bug and then a monkey eats the bug and then narrator krusko is just like all right what's what with the bug (laughs) it's like back to me (laughs) yeah it's like that, those kinds of camera movements really like lighten the mood and show you kind of the whims- whimsical scale of everything. Like that river makes no sense having the river just flowing off the top of this mountain. It makes zero sense the, uh, at all. Canal. But it's yeah, no. just and funny. It gets super yeah. deep at some points as well. I mean, it, yeah, this whole course. movie is great because it grounds you in reality in some aspects, like very relatable aspects yeah. of like just trying to. I mean, for gotcha. adults, it's like you're struggling like Pacha, right? You've got family that you're trying to take care of and you're just trying to live life, but then you kind of have like the kid aspect of like, ha, cartoons and all that. Um, oh, funny, Yzma is screaming, yeah! <laughs> Stuff like that, but um, yeah, a lot of the scenes as well. Uh, what was another one? I totally forgot about it. It's very comical scenes that are just genius that of course you can't really do with a typical camera right um like if you and i tried doing it it'd be tough we'd have to dig deep into final cut and try to figure it out some or motion or whatever just try to figure out a a weird animated version of it um but they thought of this back in like 1999 yeah definitely Um, impressive (laughs) or yeah Yeah. i guess another one was the uh what's it called the mesopotamian or the big uh, Incan head that has nostrils oh, where yeah. the water pours out. <laughs> to like, me, again. I never, I never really got it until uh, until Isma comes out on the string. That's when it looks like like a little loogie boogie thingy, and uh, like the the water out of the nose looks funny, but it doesn't like look intentional necessarily until you see Isma like swinging around on the string. <laughs> <Just> like, ooh. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> Every three-year-old ever. Ooh, you got Yzma hanging on your nose there. Let's get it to Kleenex. Uh. <laughs> uh, what did you think of the climax? Was it something that uh, overstated, well, understated? Real quick, again, uh, I was talking about this with my buddy earlier. Um, you don't really realize as a kid, but like these animated movies, or they're short, and they, they only give you, as the company, so much... like space to move around in like you only have so much time to convey the plot you can't sit on the plot for about an hour or like sit on setting up the plot for an hour and then two or three hours later you finally satisfy the plot like yeah they give them only so much time to satisfy this plot and for the climax it's very (laughs) i guess looking at mathematically it's pretty funny how statistically it doesn't make sense right you have all these vials and somehow the last vial is the human vial for Cusco. Just a really weird, like, not plot hole, but just plot convenience. Mm-hmm. Or inconvenience, in his case. Of the fact that he doesn't get to turn human until he drinks the last vial. And, of course, at that point, Yzma has a better control of what vials he's taking. Because yeah. she's right in his face at this point. Um, but, I don't know, I, I think it wraps up alright. Um, one of my biggest annoyances, I think, in this movie... Another kind of plot hole type of thing is uh, Cusco's realization that he's not the center of the universe or that he's not important only stems from the fact that he's like, oh, there's Kronk and Yzma. They'll take me back to the palace and everything will be good. Mm -hmm. And then he overhears them saying, okay, and now we're going to kill him or whatever. He's like, oh, people are bad. 
and then he goes <laughs> crawling back to Kronk, but he can't find Kronk, and then he yeah. kind of has a Kronk night in or the rain. Pacha. Pacha, my bad. Thank you yeah, for you're correcting good. You're good. Yeah. No, you're good. Um, but then he, I guess he has like maybe 24 hours to kind of reflect on the fact yeah. that he messed up. But still, it was very much like a quick 180. Um, it wasn't like the realization moment that I wanted for shifting that. And then the climax, again, it doesn't really feel too paid off to me of like how he's turned a new leaf. It's more of just, I don't know, maybe he's expanded his mind 1%. Mm. <laughs> So I don't think he's really redeemed in my, in my book as an adult, um, but I don't know. It's it, it's an interesting way they they have so many different visual gags of just like animals chasing these people and then Cusco turning into different animals. Um, <laughs> I don't know. What what do you think of the ending, Nick? Because I think um, I'm over analyzing I, this. <laughs> yeah, I think you might be over analyzing a little bit because at the end of the day, you know, we need we need to have. Uh, Cruzco sacrificed himself for Pacha. That's like what what the plot is requiring here. Um, but we need a, uh, you know, I'm gonna say it. Okay. Say the Emperor's the line, new groove. Bart. The 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 Emperor's new groove's ending is better than Episode Nine of Star Wars ending. There, I said it. Um, because it, it feels earned, right? We have all of this uh, build up. And, and Pacha and, and Cruz go look at each other and like, you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. And then they walk up to the thingy to get the little vial. And, and it just feels very earned and like they they earned this um, accomplishment. And in the very end, Pacha's hanging, hanging on by one finger and he's just like, ah, help. And Cruz sacrifices his desire for someone else. And it's the first time in the entire movie, you know, that we really see him sacrifice something for someone else. Uh, even when he saved Pacha's life, it wasn't a huge sacrifice for him. You know, it wasn't something he just grabbed Pacha, uh, and it wasn't a sacrifice. But what was a sacrifice was you know him willing to be a llama for a little bit longer to save Pacha, and I think it was very well well rewarded and rewarding, and um, I I appreciated it. I, I think it was a little sudden. I mean, we went from the the cat falling and he, yay, and then the little thingy falling to a little vial, and then somehow. I told you we didn't order a trampoline. We could, you could have told me before I set it up. It's just like, oh, that's not how trampolines work, but okay. <laughs> Again, physics is not a thing that Disney does a lot. Uh, or at least focuses physics, on too much. physics. But yeah, no, I think that's a good way to put it, Nick, is the fact that he does redeem himself in a way of actually sacrificing his humanity like his human mm-hmm. form i guess he sacrifices his human form for actually being a human or at least having human feelings of saving someone's life rather than thinking on his own self-interest of becoming a human again so he can have Cuscotopia, or at least just be becoming a normal human again so that's a good point i mean they, they kind of bats you with a mallet straight in the face with like what they're doing but at the yeah. same time, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> or I guess in this case, a frying pan to Cusco's llama face. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, or the oh, the geez. CPR scene. <laughs> Very interesting scene to kind of reflect back on. Like, one kissing Would an animal. Would you kiss a you, llama? <laughs> to, I mean, with the connection I have with my dog, if the dog required, like, air intake through its mouth, I would definitely be fine with that. Yeah. A llama I don't have any connection with, so probably not. (laughs) But a llama that is actually a human man who's drowned, it's a... I can see why Pacha had so much confliction of just, like... Do I perform CPR? I, I guess. <laughs> like, How do I do <laughs> 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 uh, He wakes up just at the perfect time. <laughs> <He's> like, ah! <laughs> oh my gosh. I guess another gag, which I forgot about as well, is uh, when Yzma is uh, con- confronting the heroes. Um, and you get her just being like, 
you weren't expecting this and starts pulling up her dress. <laughs> Everyone's like, ah! she's just like, oh no. She pulls up a little bit longer and it's a dagger. And they're like, oh, they're like, good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> a lot of humor in this. Yeah. Of, uh, I don't know. It could definitely easily go over kids' heads in that one went over aspect. Mine. <laughs> but definitely uh, make them laugh in another way because there's something funny about kissing a llama. Or a lady potentially exposing more of her ugly leg. <laughs> <laughs> hey! It's only ugly to uh, to those who don't Everyone think it's Everyone except for dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Who would who, who'd find Yzma attractive? I don't know. Hopefully Yzma finds her soulmate at some point. I don't know. <laughs> Good luck with that, though, Yzma. Ugh. <laughs> uh. I think my favorite well, Lions movie, though, is definitely the Mudka waitress lady um, talking with Pacha and Cusco. And okay. Pacha trying to cover up Cusco pretending to be a woman. Be yeah. Like, oh, we're on our honeymoon. And her response is, <laughs> bless you for coming out in public. <laughs> Just, uh, it was wow. Perfect. <laughs> it's like, she doesn't think it was a llama. But she knew something was up. <laughs> Bless you for coming up. Woo! Uh, for 2000s, I'm, oh. surprised, I'm surprised that floated for a family movie, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of humor in here that... I mean, I think Emperor's New Groove definitely stands the test of time in most aspects. I think, like, if you're to rate it or, like, scale it 9 out of 10 in terms of, like... How, like percentage wise I think 90 or 95 percent of this movie definitely stands the test of time in terms of comedy and being able to service all audiences hmm. without having to stoop to too many childish gags that just make parents roll their eyes too much yeah which is yeah. why I think this is probably a 7.5 out of 8 for me I would say the only reason why it's not a little bit better is uh, honestly the, uh, the 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 one thing that's like really 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 good like probably the best out of any movie I've ever seen is the writing like the writing is up there up there I can't think of another one off the top of my head and honestly I'd be surprised if I could um, the writing is really good um, I'd say just about everything else about the movie is good I mean it had a hundred million dollar budget so it looked nice visually interesting and stuff. You know, animation was smooth and flowed, but it was it, nothing else really stood out to me like above and beyond head and shoulders above everything else. Um, you know, I think Wally hits that on lots of levels for me. Like the animation's really good, the story's really good, the writing's really good in Wally. It's so missing like, the really strong emotional tie. Yeah, and and it, and I'm not expecting it to. Right? It's a it's a comedy basically you know it's a, it's <laughs> it's not meant to be taken seriously <laughs> so it, it, it's perfect for what it is um but yeah definitely uh six and a half almost seven something something like that so yeah great movie excited to see the next one i didn't know they had a, they had a sequel here it'll be good Bronx new groove yeah it's definitely uh definitely an interesting one i don't think it hits the same ballpark area that or the Emperor's New Groove does, but it's still in a nice realm that it's wholesome in some ways, delivers gags in other ways pretty well. Um, I think these are pretty fun movies. So yeah. I'm excited to see your reaction yeah. whenever we review that. We'll, we'll have to review that and we'll add that to the list. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Well, if there's any movies that you guys want us to review, please feel free to comment below or find us on Twitter or Instagram or wherever you want to find us, and we'll be more than happy to. Kaka 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 rock. That's what you remind me of, of yeah. the up kid. Um, but yeah, if there's any movies you want us to review, let us know. Otherwise, I have been, I guess, Model Y Mike, however you want to call me. I go by Mike or Model Y Mike or Michael, whatever you want. Address me as the co-host of Talos of Movie Reviews. And. Squeaker, squeak, squeaking, squeaker, squeak, squeaking, squeaking there. Kind of put better myself, Nick. Okay. Have a good morning slash afternoon slash evening, y'all. And I forgot to look at what our next movie was, so I don't have a funny joke. Bye! Ha! <laughs> <laughs>